Hey there. I appreciate you taking the time to stop by and check out my video. I got one that I think is going to be really fun today. We've all heard the question of how far can we stretch an SBR, AR-15, and 223. So I found myself with a Night Force scope that I wasn't using at the moment. And I decided to take that scope and put it on my 11 and a half inch SBR and uh, stretch it out the distance in video and see what we can do. So my plan today, I've got factory IMI Razor Core 77 grain ammunition that will shoot. I've got a factory Knight's Armament SR-15 Mod 2 with the 11 and a half inch barrel. It's the Knight's QDC CQB suppressor. Optics, it's a Knight Force 4 to 16 with a Tremor 3 radical and a spur mount. So really solid package, definitely not the norm for a short barreled AR-15, but I said, you know what? I feel like optics are usually the, the hold back in long range shooting with a short barrel. So I said, let's put a, a solid optic on it, stretch it out. As far as the targets, you should be able to see all three targets behind me. So up on the hill, 250 yards, I've got a six inch by six inch square. I think that ought to be a pretty simple shot. And then down in the valley, there's some green tracks. There's a two thirds Ipsic at 385 yards. I think that's gonna be pretty simple. And then if you look across the valley to the ridge there, there's a full size Ipsic right now at 686. I decided, let's try these three targets, and if we need to go further, we can. Now, that said, I've got some exciting news. I, uh, I have a partner for the, the channel now in Madison Armament. So I've been looking quite a while for a new Magneto Speed T1000 hit indicator light, and uh, my buddies at Madison Armament were able to hook me up. So when I get out there to that 686 full-size Ipsic, I'm going to go throw this Magneto Speed hit indicator light on it, and uh, when we make hits, you should be able to see it flash red. So... Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have a camera on me shooting. I'm going to have a camera looking through my SIG 3000 rangefinder so that you can spot, maybe trace. And then uh, at the far target, I'm going to put a GoPro so that you can actually see the impacts. Uh, so that said, I got to run down to 100 yards, get this thing zeroed, see what it'll do on paper, and then we'll stretch out to steel. Let's see how it goes. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm going to be able to get that 686 and if you think I'll be able to stretch further. So before we go hammer steel, I had to pop down to the 100 yard line and get this rifle zeroed. So I wanted to show you a little bit of video of that process. I've got a pretty decent zero on it now. I was going to put five rounds on paper and show you what the group looks like. That paper's already got holes in it. I've taped over all of them, so it's a clean sheet. I'm going to shoot the lower left dot. Let's put five rounds down there, and then we'll move out to the steel. We just shot an awesome group. It's about a tenth high and a tenth right, so I'm going to adjust that before we go shoot steel. Average velocity, 25-23. 11 rounds across the chronograph with an SD of 20. So good enough to get the job done. I'll show you the group, and then we'll shoot steel. Here we are walking up to our target. So again, I, the blue tape is over all the stuff I zeroed with, but you can see that lower left dot. That's where we just shot our five rounds, a little bit high and right. Not a bad group, probably three quarter MOA. So 11 and a half inch barrel, getting the job done with 77 grain. Let's shoot some steel. First rounds at any distance, here we go. 250 yards, six inch by six inch square. My app is calling for one mil of elevation, so I'm going to hold that over in the Tremor 3 reticle. There's uh, basically zero wind right now. So I'm going to hold dead on. I got six rounds loaded up. Let's see if we can make some hits. Impact. Impact. A little high. I 
impact. Impact. That was uh, four for six with two that went high, probably me. Let's step it out to 386. Two thirds Zipsic down there. I've got a GoPro running on the target so you can see the impact. I've got a GoPro running through the SIG rangefinder on 10 power so you can see it. 10 rounds loaded up. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to hold over 2.4. I'm going to favor left edge of the target for this first round and see what we get for a win. So here we go. 10 rounds. Low left. All right, so I'm gonna hold dead on. I'm gonna come up to three mils. High right. Favor left, here we go. Impact. 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 So wind is about left edge. That's three of five. Impact. Four. Impact. Five. Impact. Six. Impact. Seven. That one hit low. Impact. Eight. Eight for ten. 386, pretty easy. Let's step out to 686. 686 yards, 10 rounds, 77 grain. App says to hold over, 7.2. There's a little bit of a left to right, so I think I'm gonna favor left about a mil to center. And let's send a couple rounds and see if we can make some hits. It's gonna be hard to see impacts. I hope I can see misses, but I got a GoPro down there and I got a camera in the spotter, so here we go. Impact. First round. Impact. Impact. see it. Impact. Impact. Really see the impact on the plate. Here we go. Impact. 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 Oh, miss on the last round. So I think I was, uh, what was that, 8 for 10 at 686? I don't know about you, but let's push the plate out further. So according to the app, that's hitting with about 270 foot-pounds of energy. So not a whole lot, but let's try to get to 800. So here's our view through the range finder. I was going to range this target quick so you could see what we're actually at. Seven ninety. So we're shooting the big steel. The small little white piece is protecting my GoPro. I just got back from moving that 
full-size IPSC, moved it out to what appears to be 790 yards. And according to my app, that is right where this load's going subsonic. So we'll sling some lead out there and see what happens. I'm 9.6 mils up, so I'm actually gonna dial that in the turret versus holding it, because uh, it's pretty far down at the bottom of the reticle. So there's 9.6. I'm actually gonna go 9.7 because my last rounds were bottom edge of the plate. So it's gonna be really hard to see impacts or misses. Thankfully for the impacts, we have the magneto speed light, but um, I've got you going there. I've got the GoPro at the target. I've got the GoPro on the spotter. So let's send some rounds. I got 10 loaded up, 790 with an 11 and a half inch. There's a left to right wind, so I'm definitely going to hold two mils. First round impact, 790. Just off the right edge. That dot's low. Off the right edge. I'm at 2.4 mils of wind. Left edge. Dropped low. Just off the left edge. Oh, left edge. Impact, I'm at 1.5 mils. Impact, so not nearly as consistent. I was getting some elevation spread in it, but I think I made three hits out of 10 at 790. So I'd say that's where we're kind of losing our consistency. 790 with an 11 and a half inch SBR, getting it done, 77 grain IMI. So we just wrapped up our time shooting the Knight's SR-15, 11 and a half inch rifle and 223 all the way out to 790 yards. Wanted to take just a quick second and give you kind of a wrap up, kind of a summary. What were my thoughts? What was my experience? And uh, basically in my mind, I'm wondering, is SBR the new DMR? Um, obviously I'm kidding a little bit with that, but I hope this video shows that these SBRs, these short barrel rifles are far more capable, I think, than a lot of folks give them credit. Certainly there's a question around what would terminal performance be out of a barrel this short at that kind of distance, and I, I'm not here for that. I'm here to shoot steel targets. And uh, I think I showed pretty well that uh, 250 yards, very easy, very doable out of an 11 and a half inch rifle. 386, you can see six of the impacts are very centralized into a group, probably six-ish inches. So uh, not a great group, but not terrible for what we're, what we're working with. One round drop low, and remember I had a couple of misses there when I was working with the wind. That target we shot twice. We actually shot it once at 686, and then we shot it again at 790. The impacts kind of in that lower corner were our 686s, and then it's hard to see, but some of the impacts more central, and then the one up by the orange dot, I believe that actually was a 790. You'll be able to see that in the GoPro footage, but it's pretty interesting. You can see kind of the devastation on the plate. You get, you get the impact and a lot of spalling, and then as you work further out, it becomes just a literal, just a dot. So very little energy out of this guy when you get out to distance. But that said, accuracy-wise, you saw 100 yards. This is plenty capable. You saw the velocity, 25, 23, I think was the average. I think the big thing that holds back 
SBRs is optics. Most folks are running more of a combat style, you know, one to four, one to six, aim point, something like that on a rifle like this. And uh, the optic is key. If I didn't have this optic and I wasn't able to spot my impacts and my misses at 386 and beyond, I would have never been able to correct to get on the plate. So in my mind, the limiting factor in this package is not the barrel length, it's not the rifle, it's what optics package you're gonna run. And certainly, this is not a practical optic for this rifle, I was doing this for the video, but I think it shows, if you put a capable optic on it, the rifle will get the job done. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it, I learned a lot. I think the key thing for me is, if I did not have that magneto speed hit indicator light, I would have never been able to see that I was making these impacts on that plate. I had to have that to see the impacts. It was impossible to see the little dots that the target was putting out. It's pretty interesting. I've been shooting my uh, Barrett MRAT a lot recently in 338 Lapua and in 300 PRC. And I was running some numbers in my calculator and that 300 PRC is putting out pretty much the same energy at 1500 yards that this is doing at the muzzle. So I'm able to spot impacts with that 300 PRC all the way out to 2000 yards, no problem. And then this rifle, because the energy is so much less, you can barely even see impacts once you get out there at extended distances. And that's key to be able to correct and get on the target. So energy is important, sure it's terminal, but uh, being able to spot your impact is the most important part. So I thank you for watching. I got a lot of cool stuff coming up. I hope you stick around. I want to try this, grow this channel. So uh, if you have anyone that's interested in this kind of content, please share, uh, like it, subscribe, whatever. I'm, I'm trying to grow this. I think this is something cool um, that there's a lot of people that are into. I want to make this fun and informative. So I hope you stick around and join me for future videos.